We previously showed how proportional control can help stabilize a system. Here we're going to show how sometimes it doesn't work for second or higher order systems. Here's an example. This plant is a oscillatory system such as x dot plus x is equal to u. This system has no damping and so if you apply a step input you'll just get a continuing oscillation. If we apply the closed loop transfer function for this plant and just using proportional control, here's what we get. And then notice that this term right here is the omega n squared. And so we have a system with no damping, zeta is equal to zero. Although kp does allow us to select any value of omega n that we want. So this shows that proportional control is not enough if we want to uh, not only stabilize the system but also have uh, some good behavior such as no oscillations. The solution is to add a derivative term where we're going to keep the proportional term but we'll also add kds. This is the derivative term where s stands for taking the derivative. Let's see what the closed loop transfer function looks like in that case. We have y over r is equal to c times p which will be kp plus kd s divided by s squared plus 1 divided by that 1 plus the same quantity. If we multiply top and bottom by s squared plus 1, here's what we get. kds plus kp divided by s squared plus kds plus kp plus 1, where this term lines up with a 2 zeta omega n, and then this term lines up with omega n squared. So we can select kd and kp in order to choose any value of zeta and omega n that we like. The next question is, if we can use the derivative term to improve the damping, what values of zeta omega n are actually desirable to get good performance for our system? We often wish to design a feedback control system in order to satisfy certain design specifications in time, as in how fast the system behaves or uh, how much overshoot it has. But when we're actually designing these systems, we're often working in the complex plane, and we're trying to decide on locations for the uh, denominator's characteristic roots, or poles, in the complex plane, uh, typically in terms of zeta and omega n. So here we're going to talk about how to uh, translate between performance measures in time and uh, the corresponding locations for poles in the complex plane. Here are some typical time domain specifications. One of them is the rise time. It's the time for this signal to rise from 10 to 90 percent of its final value. And the formula for that is given by a, an approximation 1.8 over omega n, where we already said before that omega n pretty much dictates the speed of the system. So it's not surprising that omega n shows up to determine the rise time. Another value of interest is the settling time, which we've already seen before in the sense that we've discussed how long it takes for the exponential envelope to die down to 1% of its uh, amplitude. And we already said that that's 4.6 uh, time constants, which is also equivalent to four, negative 4.6 4 over sigma or 4.6 over zeta times omega n, as you see up here. Finally, there's the percent overshoot, or, or MP, which describes how much the signal exceeds the final value before it actually approaches that final value. That's shown right here. And the formula is given here. And this formula is actually not used very much. But a plot of the uh, overshoot versus the damping ratio generally looks something like this, where we're talking about 0 and 1 and 0 and 1. So not surprisingly, if you have zero damping, you're going to have 100% overshoot. And then this is going to decrease as you increase the damping. And then let's just point out a couple values of interest. 0.5 and 0.7 show up right here and here. And those values correspond to about 5% and 16% overshoot. And these are fairly popular uh, values that are used a lot in design specifications. Let's apply the, those specifications to this design problem here, where we're given the same plant that we saw before, which has transfer function s squared plus 1. But now we're given specifications in the time domain, including a maximum overshoot of 5% and a rise time of no more than 1.8 seconds. The maximum 
overshoot specification tells us that we need a damping ratio of at least 0.7 from the formula that we showed previously. Similarly, the rise time, which is 1.8 over omega n, that has to be less than or equal to 1.8. And this has been chosen a little bit fortuitously because that just means that we need an omega n of at least 1. So now we have some desired locations in the complex plane, and so we're ready to design our controller. So we showed before that if we had a proportional derivative control that that would uh, be roughly the kind of response that we want from the system. If we look at the closed loop transfer function, CP, CP plus 1 over CP, I'm not going to repeat the entire deri derivation, so I'm just going to write down the answer. It's going to give us S squared plus KDS plus KP plus 1. We already showed this previously. And now we know that we want omega n is at least 1 and zeta is at least 0.7. So that means that we have omega n squared is equal to 1 is equal to kp plus 1. So it turns out that we don't even need a kp term for this particular system. It was already fast enough as far as the proportional control is concerned. We also need a 2 omega n term, which is going to be 2 times 0.7 times 1, which is going to give us 1.4. That has to line up with our value for KD is equal to 1.4. So now we're, we've essentially designed our control system with a KP of 0 and a KD of 1.4. We're going to achieve our desired closed loop behavior. One thing I should also mention while we're at it is that when designing our feedback control systems, at least for the moment, we're usually going to ignore the numerator of the transfer function, the KDS plus KP, and we really concentrate on the uh, closed loop denominator in order to determine the main characteristics of stability and performance. Here's a review of what we talked about. We said that proportional control usually improves speed and stability, but it's not always going to be enough for second and higher order systems. We also showed that a derivative term can improve the performance, and then you actually have two numbers that you can change, KP and KD, to uh, yield the desired performance, including some desired damping. And then we just talked about three ways that time domain performance specifications can be given that talk about how we want the system to behave and let us translate that information into desired closed loop pole locations in terms of zeta and omega 